Welcome to Shul.com. We are here at the Surfside Kolel Borkid. We are reading from Brahaid and Enu, Enlighten Our Eyes by Rabbi Goldschmidt. Uh, it's a fantastic book on Sheminat Enayim. We are on page 61, chapter 1, The Special Qualities, part 1. Then I will know you are mine. That's the title. A frequent guest, a frequent guest in the home of the Shunamit was none other than Elisha Hanavi. She told her husband that this man was holy. How did she deduce that the fact about Elisha and Navi? So you, you know the story of the Shunamit? Mm-hmm. It's a story in the Navi. We can talk about it in the future, but um, Elisha and Navi, one of the prophets, would go visit her. So she tells her husband he's a very holy man. So how did she know that he was holy? Simply because he had never looked at her. Mm-hmm. So sh- he was a guest in her house. And at no point did he ever have eye contact or look at her face. It's unbelievable. Uh, Hazal say in Midrash Vayikra 24-6 that in the matters of Arayot, restraint equals holiness. Just taking care to refrain from looking at the forbidden and from thinking lustful thoughts already earns one the title of Kadosh. So, you know, when they say a person is, uh, has Kedusha, it's specifically talking in the matter of the male to female uh, how he behaves. That's what the level of Kedusha is. Mm-hmm. And even it goes furthermore into what a Sadiq is. But Sadiq has more classifications. But a Kadosh, they say that person that has Kedusha, what is he talking about? He watches his eyes and who he looks at and who he, and, you know, who he converses with from the other gender. Rejection of impurity generates holiness. Rejection of impurity generates holiness. Okay, an unfathomable light of holiness envelops the man who conquers his lust, especially when it burns and races inside him. This is a big one. So when a person has that burning desire to do something lustful, and he conquers it, he pushes it down the most that he can. It brings a tremendous amount of kedusha. You know, it, it, it's not the energy. You know, um, who was it? Uh, Newton who said. Energy is, is not created nor destroyed. It's always it always has that balance in the world. You can't create or destroy anything. Same thing with 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 a lust. A person has a desire, a lust to look at a, a, a woman that's not dressed properly, or to or to do something. There's an energy there. If he if he's able to quell that that negative energy and push it in, he can push it to kedusha which gains him a tremendous amount of, of biracha and elevation in spirituality because that desire had to go somewhere. Yeah. You took it and you, you just converted, you moved it to something of, of, of positivity. Uh, it is not because Rebbe compiled the Mishnah that we refer to him as Rabbeinu HaKadosh. It's because he never in his life looked at the private parts of his body and therefore his soul was Kadosh. So it says uh, that um, Rabbi Yudahan Nasi one of the time, one of the kings had visited him who had done Brit Milah, he was converting. And when he had completed the Brit Milah, he asked Rabbi Yudah Nasi, to ask, he asked him, can he check his Brit Milah to make sure that it, it was done right? Mm-hmm. He said, he can't. He said, why not? He said, because he never looked at his. He never looked at his Brit Milah in his entire life. So he's like, I can't check somebody else's. That, that's what Kadosh. That's what they call him. They call him Kadosh. In addition, he would never unnecessarily lower his hands below his waist. His body too was Kadosh. That's brought in Masechet Shabbat 118, uh, Amud Bet 118b. That he never would lower his hands. His hands always were waist side or above. Also, an unbelievable, an unbelievable um, act because. That's, that, that's not only mental, that's, that's also physical that he had to tie into to allow himself that, in, that habit to never do that. What better way to bolster our resolve than to repeat the wonderful words that Hashem himself has to say to us. If you will give me your heart and your eyes, then I will know that you are mine. That's brought in the Yalkut Shimoni in Mishle, chapter 27. Neither look at nor contemplate what is sinful and automatically you qualify to be lifted beyond the grasp and the smallness of this temporal existence and to have Hashem himself fill every corner of your life. That's unbelievable. Part 2. Guarding our spiritual eyes. Sefer Hasidim assures us 
that even the Malachim, those holy celestial beings, cannot approach the place of honor that is reserved for the Yid, the Jew, who, among other things, carefully guards his eyes. In the next world, he won't just be sitting amongst ordinary folk. His desired seat is amongst our very greatest, part of that inner circle of which Hashem himself is the center. The Malachim, having always been pre-programmed to holiness and never having to struggle for it, will be obliged to remain outside the circle of such tzaddikim and will come to them begging to know what is Hashem doing. Sefer Hasidim 140 as for remembering one's learnings, pure eyes will help here too, because Sheminat and Aim has the ability to protect our memory, says Rav Shimon Shkap, Zatzal. Yes, pure eyes stand guard over the Torah that one has learned. This is hinted at in the last parashah of Shema by the proximity of the words Velotaturu, do not stray after your eyes, to the words Lemahan Tizkiru, so that you shall remember. So it's unbelievable. So Rav Shimon Shkap here is giving a segula. That if a person watches his eyes, he has the ability um, to remember his learning. And we'll end here, and tomorrow we'll continue on strengthening one's memory. Baruch Adonai, Amen, Amen.